All right, so we are back with part two of creating a custom connector. In the first part, we explored the API docs and learned how to authenticate with the HubSpot API. And in this step, we're gonna be doing some testing of the API to figure out how pagination works and documentation in Postman. Now, if you're not familiar with Postman, it's a very helpful API testing tool and documentation tool that I personally have fallen in love with over the last couple of years. Um, with Postman, I've been able to build quite a few custom connectors. And then today we're going to show how I set up a project in Postman. And I just wanna say like, I guess a caveat here is a lot of people think that maybe this second step isn't entirely necessary. I would highly disagree because I've seen that chances are you're gonna have to come back and make updates to the connector, right? Maybe you have to make a new report. Maybe the API changes from V2 to V3. Lots of things can happen. And so in this case, this, this step is very critical. Um, and some of the things we're gonna follow in this step is first of all, we're gonna use the import functionality to easily create API calls that we're gonna use in our connector, um, right? So we're not, gonna, we're not gonna work too hard. We're gonna let Postman do the heavy lifting for us. We're also gonna leverage variables and global authentication um, on the Postman collection. This is gonna reduce the headaches that we have when creating tons of API calls. So when we come back to our project, the authentication is already set up. We don't have to rework it every time we create a new API call. And third, we're gonna use some of Postman's documentation features because like I said, chances are, you're most likely gonna have to come back and fix something with the connector that you built. Okay, so hopping into Postman, um, I'm using the Postman desktop app. You can also use the web app if you'd like to, but in this case, I'm gonna come in here and create a new collection, which is Postman terms for a group of APIs. And let's call this HubSpot. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about authorization, right? So this is where I talked about global authorization. In last video, we determined that it's a private app token. And so in this case, I'm gonna come here and come to API key and then key value and this is where I'm gonna come back to my docs. And if we remember the key value is, let's see, where was that? Right here. So we can see the header, um, the key is authorization and then the value is bare with the private access token. And so in this case, I'm gonna copy this and come back to Postman. And our key is authorization and our value is gonna be bare. And then this is where we're gonna actually create a variable. So now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna to come to variables and let's add a new one called private token. And in this case, we're gonna copy over our access token. Let's copy this over. And then we will save this. And so now we have a private token that's a variable. So now if I come back here, we can insert our variable using double curly brackets, private token, and save. So now we have our projects set up, we have authentication set up as well. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to our developer docs. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is this is really nice. You know, I've already done some testing, I know this works. So in this case, I can copy this curl command and then come back to Postman. And now let's import the curl command. So let's see, we'll come here and we will say import raw text, paste in the curl command. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this right here because we already have that as our global authentication. So now I'll click continue and import it. And so now it imports and we can save it to our collection. So now I'm just gonna click save and save it to my HubSpot collection. And I always like to rename it something that makes more sense, right? So in this case, I'm gonna rename this to Fit companies. And now let's just test to make sure it works. Okay, and this is an example where it does not work. So in this case, let's see, um, our bearer token is up there. Oh, maybe it's not, maybe it's not perfect. Let's see real quick. Yep, so this is a common example. In this case, I actually forgot the beginning PAT of this access token. So I'm gonna come back here and update my variable. Let's come back to our variable and let's do that. And let's make sure that it's there for all of them and save it. Now, if I come back here and click send, we can get back our results. It's perfect. Now I'm just gonna change this to, yep, our limit's 100, like we looked at, like we talked about in the previous video. Um, so that's an example of putting this in, um, importing. Okay, so I'm gonna walk through that import one more time with our company contacts this time. Um, like I said, I'm gonna come here and copy the command that we know works. And if I do it, I can do a test call and already see that it's working properly. And then I can come back to Postman and let's import it using the raw text. In here, I'm gonna take off this header because we've already created a global authentication. Click continue, import it, 
and then save it to my HubSpot. Yep, awesome, save it there. In this case, let's make this a little more, let's make this a little more explicable. Explain what it does, get contacts. And let's save it. And now let's see if this works properly. So I'm gonna change the limit to 100 and see if we get back. Awesome, we do. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go through and do this very quickly with all my other endpoints. Okay, so now I have done it with the remaining endpoints that I wanted to do. And in this case, I did a deals endpoint, which uh, gives me deals. And then also I did this authentication endpoint. So this here, um, it's actually, whenever you're connecting a, doing a Domo connector, you'll see that there's this credential section here where it'll ask you to put in your credentials and then connect. And sometimes you'll get that failure that we're all familiar with. This is the authentication script. And so in this case, um, when we're creating a custom connector, you wanna make sure that you can authenticate with the API successfully. And in this case, it's just looking for a 200 um, status code for the HTTP response. And so in this case here, um, I just, I'm basically hitting the company object, limiting it to one. With other APIs, sometimes there will be an authentication endpoint that you can do, like like a who am I or um, some kind of simple endpoint. In this case, I couldn't find one. So I just basically took one that should exist for any person who has a HubSpot CRM uh, tool. So now we're almost done with this step. Um, in this case, we have successfully created a new collection for HubSpot. We have all our different API endpoints that we'll be hitting for our connector. And the last thing I wanted to show here was there's a documentation section. So if I come over here to this documentation button, I can come here and see exactly the endpoint I'm hitting. It'll tell me the authorization, the query parameters that I'm putting, and I also can put in a description, right? So I'd highly recommend that when you're creating these different uh, collections, as you can see here, like I've, I've created quite a few, write in the descriptions, write things that are helpful. Um, I can probably show you an example here where, for example, when I was working with the monday.com one, um, and I come here and look at my documentation, it shows exactly like the query, in this case, the GraphQL query that I was hitting for the endpoint, um, authorization, what the API endpoint is. And so, you know, even though I haven't worked with this in a year, I can probably get this up and running pretty quickly thanks to this, this Postman documentation. So I definitely recommend that taking, you know, always using Postman documentation. But yeah, that kind of covers this step here, right? We, we test the API, we make sure that we can authenticate with it again. Um, we put it all into Postman so that we'll easily be able to test and develop in our IDE. And so we'll be working on that step later on. Thanks.